everybody and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. In today's video we're going to be doing another installment in my character profile series. The character that we're going to be taking a look at today was voted on by my patrons over on Patreon and that is the beloved character of Jane Farstrider. Now before we get into the video I wanted to tell you all that as the channel has grown I've been getting a lot of requests to plug people's stuff, to advertise, and do affiliate deals. I know Daniel Green made a video about this the other day and I thought it would be worth laying out my criteria for the same thing. Um, as I have been getting a lot of these requests lately. Basically, my criteria is really simple. If I use it and I enjoy it, then I'm gonna recommend it or I'll advertise it. Uh, if I don't like a product or I wouldn't use it, then I won't recommend it. Which is why so far, the only sponsor that I'm really happy to recommend is audible.com. Audible is the largest source of audiobooks out there. And if you haven't jumped on the audiobook train yet, I highly recommend it. For me, I spend a good amount of time driving or cooking or cleaning around the house. And it's really great because you can listen to books while you drive, or if you have an Alexa, you can listen while you're doing things around the house. There is a really easy way for you to test this out and decide if audiobooks are for you. Audible is giving my viewers a very special offer. You can get a 100% free audiobook to test their service out, and you can help out the channel a great deal at the same time. It's super easy. Go to www.audibletrial.com forward slash nabless and sign up for a one month free trial. You can cancel the service at any time. You don't even need to make a payment, but I think it will really change the way that you consume books. It's great for rereads because it's a totally different experience. Highly recommend it. But hey guys, let's go ahead and jump into the video here and throw up a spoiler rating for the video. The video will have a spoiler rating of red, meaning it will have major spoilers all the way through the final book, Memory of Light. If you have not read the full series, watch at your own risk. So as with my other character analysis videos, we're going to break down this analysis into 10 different sections, each taking a look at a different part of Jane Farstrider's character. These sections are history before the story, actions during the story, appearance, personality, special abilities, notable possessions, relationships, greatest moments, what happens after the story, and the overall impact and role in the story. Then I'll give you my analysis of the character arc overall and whether Jane Farstrider worked for me as a character. So let's dive in to Jane Farstrider. History before the story. Jane Farstrider was born as Jane Charon in the year 925 of the New Age in Malkir. Malkir was one of the great borderland nations and it bordered with the Blight to the north. In 953 of the New Age, a great lord of Malkir, with a rightful claim to the throne, Cohen Grimelin attempted a coup over the current king of Malkir at the time, Alakir Mandragoran, the father of Lan Mandragoran. In this coup, he conspired with Brayan, the wife of Lane Mandragoran, the king's brother. They intended to put Brayan's son, Isom, on the throne. As part of this coup, Cohen Gamelin, who was a dark friend, pulled back the soldiers from the border forts along the Blight, leaving just a small garrison. At the same time as this coup was taking place, a massive Trolloc attack poured into Malkir, taking the depleted border forts quickly. As Malkir was being overrun and Cohen Gamelin's treachery was being revealed, he was captured by Jane Charon, who was now going by Jane Farstrider. Farstrider brought Cohen back to the king, where he was defeated in single combat, but Malkir was overrun and the kingdom fell. After the fall of Malkir, Jane Farstrider spent his time exploring the world, even taking himself to the distant and mysterious lands of Shara. He wrote his famous novel, The Travels of Jane Farstrider, and had it published in the year 968 of the New Age. The book became a hit all across the Westlands and was present in the great libraries to individual homesteads, being one of the most popular written works in the world. It was at this time that Jane Farstrider disappeared for a while, only to reappear shortly after the Aiel War, around 20 years prior to the start of Eye of the World. He showed up in an Ogier setting, nearly dead, and gave the message to the Ogier that the Dark One was going to blind the Eye of the World. This knowledge was planted by Ishamayel, and it eventually made its way to Moraine and the crew during the book in the Eye of the World, around 20 years later. This is what prompted them to make their trip to Faldara and eventually into the Blight to find the Eye. Once he had recovered from his injuries, he married and lived with his wife for years until her death. He realized later that he had been used by Ishamael to influence events, and he changed his name to Noel, going by that name, claiming to be the cousin of Jane Farstrider. He disappeared again in 981 of the New Age, north of the Blasted Lands. Actions during the story. Jane Farstrider's first appearance in the novels comes as he later reappeared under compulsion from Grendel in her hideaway, serving as one of her pawns. She sends him to Ebudar to find a cache of Terangrial and Angrial, and also to spy on Jaquim Keridan and the Black Aja sisters Phalia and Boda and Ispan Shafar. He happens to stumble upon Matt as he 
he's being attacked by the Golom, and manages to distract it enough, and Matt escapes. This was the beginning of their friendship, and Jane, going by the name Noel still, begins to stay with Matt Cawthon. As we meet and hear more from Noel, it is apparent that some of his recent memories have been lost or tampered with due to his compulsion. Matt writes him off as a crazy old man, but Noel tells stories to Olver about his days as Jane. Noel accompanies Matt as he escapes Ebudar with Tuon, and he stays with Matt until they finally return to Camelin. He agrees as well to accompany Matt and Tom as they rescue Moraine from the Tower of Genjai. He brings a set of iron throwing knives into the tower. As the group rescues Moraine, it becomes clear that they're going to be overrun by the Aelfin and that they would never escape. Noel chose to remain behind in the tower and hold off the Aelfin as long as he could, essentially sacrificing himself for others to escape. He succeeds in buying time for the escape, but loses his life in the process. Before Jane Farstrider leaves Matt to fight the Aelfin, he says to Matt, if you ever meet a Malkieri, you tell him Jane Farstrider died clean, revealing to Matt that he was, in fact, Jane Farstrider, something that came a great surprise to Matt. Now, we thought this was the end of his story, but during the last battle, while behind enemy lines at the field of Marilor, Ulver blows the horn of Valir, and Jane Farstrider rides to his rescue, being called back as a hero of the horn. He then rides with the rest of the heroes against the shadow. At his his death in the Tower of Genjai, Jane Farstrider was 76 years old, but he lived on as a hero of the Horn, bound to be reborn again. Appearance. Jane Farstrider, as we see him in the novels, is an old, scrawny, white-haired man. He has gaps in his teeth, a very hooked nose, and a weathered face and stooped shoulders that show his age. He has what appears to be very arthritic fingers, with others noting that it appears that his nose and fingers have been broken many times. Despite his frail appearance, it is also noted that he has a solidarity about him, and a seeming capability as a man who's been around for a long while and he's a survivor. Personality. In terms of his personality, Jane Farstrider is really an old man while we know him. He's wise and humble, but he's also very brave. He has seen the world and done many things, and at this point in his life, he just wants to be of use. He enjoys telling stories of his youth while still hiding his actual name. In fact, he tells so many tales that Matt finds them unbelievable, and he writes him off as a delusional old man. But his kindly personality and general helpfulness is why Matt keeps him around. Special abilities. Jane Farstrider really has no special abilities in terms of channeling ability or the ability to access the world of dreams. There was a theory that I may cover in a theory video that he could channel, but as it's nothing but a theory, I'm not going to get into depth about it right here. The abilities that Jane does have, however, are that of survival. He is one of the world's most famous explorers, having been to places that most men have never heard of or been to. He explored the Blight, the Aiel Waste, the mysterious lands of Shara, and a number of other unseen places. He has abilities not only in survival, but also as a fighter. He has street smarts that have kept him alive over his many years. Notable possessions. Jane Farsh Strider doesn't really have any notable possessions at his death, but we can call his memory and stories his greatest possession. The knowledge and sense of wonder that he passed on to the people of the Westlands through his book, The Travels of Jane Farstrider, is the greatest gift that he left. Relationships. The most notable relationships for Jane Farstrider are those with Ulver and Matt. He builds a friendship with Matt from the time that he discovers Matt fighting the Golom, and he doesn't leave Matt's side. When the Golom tells Matt that he will kill Noel, Matt worries for his safety and has Noel sleep in different tents, just as Matt is doing. I really believe Matt thought that he was taking care of an old man and that Noel or Jane thought that he was taking care of Matt. The other relationship that's super significant for Jane is that with Ulver. Ulver spends most of his time listening to Jane's stories and playing snakes and foxes with him. Ulver believes all of his stories, and because of this, Jane loves to entertain the boy and teach him. Ulver is really kind of Jane's one last responsibility, at least in his own head. Later, when he comes back through the Horn of Valir, he rides directly for Ulver and saves him from the Trollocs. Greatest moments. There are two moments to me that stand out with Jane Farstrider in the novels. First, when he sacrifices his life to save Matt, Tom, and Moraine in the Tower of Genjai. He was the person in the group that had the least reason to be in the tower and the least reason to sacrifice his life, but his adventurous spirit and loyalty to Matt is what caused him to sacrifice himself. The rescue of Ulver during the last battle is another great moment where he rides directly to save Ulver right after he had blown the Horn of Valir. This just demonstrates his love for Ulver and his determination to save those that he cares about. What happens after the story? Well, as I mentioned earlier, Jane Farstrider becomes 
becomes bound to the Horn of Valir. Since he had died in the Tower of Genjai, his spirit will live in the world of dreams until he is reborn into a new body. While we don't know how long that will be, typically it's many years until that happens. It could be as many as hundreds of years. Overall impact. So what is Jane Farstrider's overall impact on the story? Well, he isn't a super influential character in that he's absolutely vital to the story, but to me he serves to give depth to the world and the world building. I say that because his story and the fact that he published a novel about his travels gives some depth to the world and some wonder to the characters, many of whom never leave their small area of the world. Reading a book like The Travels of Jane Farstrider to Matt, Rand, and Perrin at the beginning of the novels just makes the world feel huge. He's an interesting side character, and the idea that he is one of the more famous people in the Westlands but hides his identity for much of the novel is kind of fun. I love Matt's reaction when he actually finds out that Noel was Jane Farstrider, the hero from the book that he had read. I think he was really well executed for being the side character that he is. It does seem to me that if he really wanted to hide his identity and not be known as Jane Farstrider, then maybe he should have changed his last name from Charon, but apparently it worked. So that's my character analysis of Jane Farstrider. What did you think of Jane? Was he a good character? Did I miss something? Let me know in the comments below. And if you are liking my content, please take a moment and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon right next to that to be notified when I release new content. Check out my Patreon, the link is in the description below, for some exclusive content and access to my Discord server. Also, I am moving, so keep an eye. There, there will be a, a little more sparse video content for about the next week. Uh, this background is about to change because I'm going to be moving. Um, but look for a couple videos to come out here in the near future. I'm going to be doing a video that will break down what the Wheel of Time TV show can learn from Game of Thrones. Um, so I'm excited to get that one out to you all. Again, guys, thanks for everybody. Until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy oh so free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me? Tinker asked the mistress, don't you got a labour man? Yes, but she replied, he lacks your talent and your hands And I can tell you got the skill to hit the spots you see So Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me? Tinker said the neighbour boy could probably get it done He's far too inexperienced, I'll never go that young I'm sure he can be broken in or top, but he's too sweet So Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me? The mistress asks the tinker, can you help me move the chairs? They're just a bit too heavy and they need to go upstairs. She bats her eyes, the tinker sighs, then picks them up with ease. So tinker, manly tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?